In this video, we're going to take a look at practice quiz 8 on log functions. So first thing we're going to do is graph the following log function and identify the key characteristics. So in Desmos, I'm going to type in log base 3 of x minus 2 plus 1. And I'm going to get a few points to put on the graph, like my x-intercept right there would be a good one. So it looks like it's around 2.3. And then I can tell from the function that it went to the right two. And I can tell from Desmos, it looks like it does have a vertical asymptote at x equals two. So I'm gonna sketch that imaginary line. And then I'm gonna just sketch my log function like it looks on Desmos. So that's a good way to put it on the graph. The domain of this function is related to the fact that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals two. So that means the domain won't go any further left than two and it won't equal two. So we need to put a parentheses with two and then it goes to infinity because it goes off to the right forever. The range is gonna be all real numbers because it goes down forever and up forever. And the asymptote, like we mentioned, is x equals two. So that's it for number one. Two says given y equals two log base 4 of x plus 5 minus 7, state the parent function and describe the transformations. So the parent function would just be y equals the log base 4 of x. So you do want to put the base and then just the x. The transformations would be the 2 out front makes it have a vertical stretch of 2. So vertical stretch by a factor of 2. It goes to the left 5 because of the plus 5 in the grouping symbol it makes it go to the left 5 and then the minus 7 makes it shift down 7 because that's not in the grouping symbol and that's it for number 2 number 3 says solve for x so we're given a log function that has one log so we can't just cancel it out we need to rewrite it in exponential form so that would give us 3 squared equals 2x plus 1 and we end up with 9 equals 2x plus 1, and then we have to solve from there. So I'm going to subtract 1 and get 8 equals 2x, then divide both sides by 2, and I get x is equal to 4. You just want to plug it back in and make sure that does not give you a negative value in this parentheses that we're taking log of. So 2 times 4 plus 1 is a positive number, since that would just equal positive 9. So x equals 4 should be a good answer for number 3. Number four says a population of frogs is growing exponentially. The initial population of frogs is 234 and it's increasing at a rate of 5%. Write a function to model the population of frogs. So if it's growing exponentially, I wanna use the growth model. So A equals P, one plus the rate to the power of time. And so that would be A equals the 234 frogs, one plus the rate, but I need to make it into a decimal so that would be 0.05 for 5%. And I can do that by moving the decimal over two places to the left or by dividing five by 100 also works every time. And then I'm gonna leave the T because remember when you write a function, you wanna have an input and an output. You don't wanna plug those in yet. In the second part of this question, I'm gonna plug in the eight. So I'm gonna say A equals 234, one plus 0.05, and then the power of eight because that's the time that they asked me about. And then I'm just gonna type that in the calculator. So let's do 234, one plus 0.05 to the eighth power gives me 345.7. But with frogs, it doesn't make sense to have a part of a frog. So let's just round that up to 346 frogs because that would make more sense. Okay, so for number five, the last question on the practice quiz, it says you invest $5,600 into an account earning continuously compounded interest with a rate of 2.5%. If you want to have $20,000 in the account, how many years will it take you to get there? So we're going to set up our continuously compounded interest formula, which is A equals P E to the power of rate times time. So we have $5,600 we're starting out with. We have a rate of 2.5%, so that'll be 0.025 when we put it as a decimal. 
We're going to leave time. We're looking for how many years it will take us to get a final amount of 20,000. So what we can do first is divide both sides by 5,600 to get rid of that number on the right. So let's use our calculator again. And let's say 20,000 divided by 5,600 is, oh, wait a minute, I missed a number. 3.57 approximately equals e to the power of 0.025t. Now with e, that would be rewritten in natural log form because natural log is the type of log that has a base of e. So I've got to say natural log base e of 3.57 equals 0.025t. And then in my calculator, I can type in natural log of 3.57 and get a value for that, which is 1.27 approximately. And then that's equal to 0.025t. So I need to take the 1.27 and just divide that by the 0.025 and I get 50.8 would be t or approximately 51 years would be a good answer for that one. So that would take a while in other words. But that's it for practice quiz number eight on log 